our corporate target is how do we help enable one cent a kilowatt hour solar, which is completely feasible once interest rates go down a little bit. And then the second is how do we achieve the scale up that's required? And I think it used to seem like fantasy that the market would be a terawatt scale a year. But, you know, different pundits will say within the next few years, we could be at a terawatt a year of installations. That is my friend, Matt Campbell. For those who are unfamiliar, Matt is one of the OGs in the industry, and he's one of six co-founders of a company called TerraBase. And what you just heard, for even those of us in the solar industry, sounds a little bit like science fiction. I've been in the solar industry since 2006. Been watching friends like Matt grow up in the industry as true leaders and visionaries and pioneers starting companies like TerraBase, but before TerraBase, running companies like SunPower, First Solar, and really figuring out how to scale first to gigawatt and now to what Matt and his colleagues call terawatt scale solar and renewable energy projects. But I wanted to put into perspective a little bit the nature of what it might look like to get to one cent per kilowatt hour for solar power deployment give you a sense of one cent per kilowatt hour currently in the forecast for out to 2050 the levelized cost of electricity for capacity weighted electricity delivered in most of the grids here in the united states varies between solar on the lowest side uh around at the best case 29 dollars a megawatt hour which is 2.9 cents a kilowatt hour and ultra supercritical coal, which is the most efficient coal, which is the lowest emissions producing coal at around 10 cents a kilowatt hour or 100, around $101 per megawatt hour. And everything in between is combined cycle gas, geothermal, biomass, onshore and offshore wind, and even solar and hybrid hydroelectric coming in at around 60 to $70 a megawatt hour. Now, most of us would have thought 10, 15 years ago, what a dream if we could get solar down below the cost of hydro, which was the de facto best in class renewable energy generation, right? Solar is there. Wind at $40 a megawatt hour. Offshore wind at a little over $100 a megawatt hour is there. And um, well, not quite as efficient as hydroelectric is certainly more rapidly deployable. And Therein lies the crux of the conversation around one of the coolest innovations I've seen, and that is compiling decades of research and experience into the automation, autom automatization of <laughs> deployment for solar. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about in today's conversation with Matt Campbell, one of the six co-founders and the CEO of a company called TerraBase. The way that they're going about pulling the components together from design to deployment to management of these systems aims to truly get us not only to what Matt refers to as terawatt scale, and we are entering the terawatt era, but down to that critical target of one cent per kilowatt hour, $10 per megawatt hour, something that I, when I started my career in 2006, thought was practically impossible for solar. The reality is all the way back to episode three of Suncast podcast, my friend Camilo Patrinani said, solar energy will be free. We'll figure out other services to bolt onto it just to give us a reason to charge money because solar energy will be ubiquitous. The Terawatt era virtually guarantees that's true. All right, we're cruising the floor at this year's InterSolar 2024. And I came across one of what I think the more innovative companies in our industry of our time led by... A industry OG, Mr. Matt Campbell. Matt's the co-founder and CEO of TerraBase. Today, we're going to learn a little bit more about TerraBase. Matt, you guys have had an incredible year, a lot of announcements, your fifth anniversary. You are scaling quickly. You've got a lot of momentum. Could you talk a little bit about the things that have excited you in 2023 and coming into 2024. Yeah, I think 2023 was a banner year for utility scale solar. I mean, it, it's it's been building over the past five, 10 years, 
But I think the, the, the confluence of the IRA, getting through the pandemic, getting through the supply chain disruptions, and with a huge surge in interest from corporate buyers of renewable energy, et cetera, the demand for utility scale solar has never been bigger. So I think a lot of, th like 2023 was a, was a banner year for solar across the world and for utility scale solar in the United States. And coming into 2024, I've never seen the market stronger. The number of projects that are entering construction is incredible. And I was just speaking with a, a colleague recently that, you know, 500 megawatts is just an average project these days. So I remember when I was at Trina, 400 megawatts, the Signal Mountain project was something to really tell the world about, right? The largest utility scale project, you're right. And now you all are using a term that I haven't heard a lot, which is the terawatt scale industry yeah. and what's important about being able to achieve terawatt scale is developing systems that address the full life cycle development cost as well as optimizing the development elaboration yeah. in the in the project cycle you have years of experience with your team spanning two of and many more but two of the biggest players in the industry first solar and sun power where a lot of the technology was originally birthed and and, and sort of road tested yeah. talk to me a bit about what it means to have a large scale solar power plant optimization and delivering full scale solutions the way that TerraBase does? You know, the industry is constantly driving for improvement and cost reduction. And in some ways, this is in tension with the growth of the industry because as the industry scales, um, you just don't have enough people with experience building these big power stations, right? If you're growing 40% a year, every year I need 40% more engineers, designers, project managers. So your ability to optimize is limited. And that's where we think technology comes into play. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of just having a tribe of solar experts fine tuning a project to squeeze out a little bit of value, you can, you can do that through software. And so that's part of the founding mission of TerraBase, which is how can we use the latest in technology to help the industry scale up and to continue to find ways to drive costs down? Yep. You have a very ambitious vision for what you refer to as the terawatt era. That solar technology for the terawatt era uh, graphic that you all use, if you could kind of walk us through the vision of what that solar technology for the terawatt era graphic really represents for the business and for the industry. And then we can break into each individual component. Yeah, so when we founded the company, the, the, the fundamental question was, when you're doing solar at the terawatt scale, what, what would that world look like? And what kind of technology would be applied to achieve the dual objectives, which number one is how do I keep cutting the cost? Mm -hmm. And you know, our corporate target is how do we help enable one cent a kilowatt hour solar, yeah. which is completely feasible once interest rates go down a little bit. Um, and then the second is how do we how do we achieve the scale up that's required? And I think it used to seem like fantasy that the market would be a terawatt scale a year, but you know different pundits will say within the next few years we could be at a terawatt a year of installations. So, so that's that's sort of the founding principle. Let's get ready that for the terawatt age. How we think about it is we think about the life cycle of a project. So, you know, years before a project is built, you need to design the project. You go into a development and pre-construction stage. And so TerraBase has developed and acquired a set of tools that are used to model the energy that's going to be produced, help you to optimize for the topography, uh, the electrical design, all the ingredients that ultimately define the cost of the project. You know, we say that a lot of times the cost is defined not in the construction stage, but in the design stage. And that's where software, AI, and other tools can apply a lot of value. And then as the project enters the construction phase of its life cycle, you know, what tools could be used to facilitate the, the high quality and low cost uh, construction of the plant? You know, up until now, the project management of a solar uh, plant is largely manual um, or using standardized tools like a Microsoft project or other construction tools. And we think there's a huge opportunity to facilitate efficiencies through modernizing and digitalizing a lot of that semi-manual workflow. And that's, uh, that's where we have a set of software tools called Construct that oversees the deployment phase of the life cycle. And then in the physical world, and it, it's important to remember that um, we don't just live in a digital world. We're building physical infrastructure, projects that are in the hundreds of millions or billions, some of the largest infrastructure projects that are built. So you have to think through how does digital interface with physical and in that in the physical world, which is represented below, how do we pull data from drones and robots and construction equipment 
and then sort of supply chain and upstream OEMs involved in a project? And how do we kind of meld all that together on a platform which could be automatically installed? So up until now, all solar construction is manual. We think that to go to the terawatt scale, you need did, uh, automation. And so we've synthesized a set of robotics, industrialization of solar deployment and software to sort of automate the construction of the plant. And then once you've built the plant, you get into the operational phase, and that's what we, we call our plant controls offering. So this is the software and hardware that's used to manage the project, uh, to talk to the grid, charge the batteries, do all the things you need to, to manage a dynamic renewable asset. And, uh, and then similarly in the operations phase, there's a lot of work to be done in the automation of inspections and mowing and cleaning and all that. And so we, we see a future world where all of these digital and robotic pieces meld together. And that, that construct is, allows you to, to scale things up and continue to reduce cost. Matt, I would love to take a moment and drill down on each individual product. It's a four product suite that allows the terawatt era to really gain momentum and scale. Yeah. And I think that the way that you've put together each component of it is, you know, it speaks to the many gigawatts and decades of experience of your team to really understand how do we assemble in a more automated and efficient way that's sensitive to the terrain, the human involvement with that terrain and the, and the equipment and to the velocity required, right? Yeah. So we'll start with plant pr predict. We're going to walk over to plant predict and give us the 45 second to 60 second download on each one, okay? Perfect. Yeah, so this is uh, plant predict, which is a set of tools to do value engineering, project development, and optimization and energy prediction for a solar project. Um, there's a lot of different things the tool can do, but I'm going to show one of the most important features, which we released last year, which is a product called Terrain Pro. So as we know, the world is in flat, um, and solar projects are increasingly getting built on a hilly terrain. And uh, you know, some people say, well, all the valley floors have been covered with solar. Now we're going up on the hills surrounding the valley. And so we've seen a lot of new product announcements with terrain following trackers but those products need to be designed. And the design process, when you go into the third dimension, is incredibly complex, and that's where software can help provide a solution. So here's an example of a project, and, uh, and this is um, uh, a heat map showing where, for this project, where you would need to grade the site. Now, grading is expensive, it's environmentally problematic, and it's banned in some parts of the country. So everybody wants to figure out, how do I get rid of grading? And um, this would be an example where I don't grade the site and I use trackers as we knew them two years ago. So no terrain following. And in that scenario, you can see that there would be 300,000 cubic meters of grading required to build the project. And, uh, and then using the software, you can do a lot of what if analysis. And I'll fast forward to a result, which is if I allow just three degrees of articulation at each post, and calculate the amount of grading required. Um, takes a second to load it, but it goes from 300,000 cubic meters to 23,000 cubic meters. So huge, huge cost savings, uh, huge environmental benefit, and uh, and there's this big parametric optimization between the length of the steel post and the amount of grading, the type of tracker, and ultimately the energy production. Because to model that energy in three dimensions. Is it, you can't do it in PV Syst, yeah. and that's why we need a tool like Plant Predict that can do it in the cloud. And what's also remarkable for those of us who have seen countless iterations upon iterations of design is that you just did those calculations in a matter of seconds, not hours or days. Your, your decision team is able to take that data and move more quickly than we were in the past, right? So on the optimiz optimizing the front end, the design, the preparation, the planning for these projects, Plan Predict allows fast iteration, it allows faster testing, faster assumption modeling. Yeah, and you can imagine like uh, if you're a solar developer with a relatively less experienced uh, set of development engineers, this is like giving them superpowers. It's like, hey, it's... 20 years of solar experience in a box and uh you know and you know so easy even a ceo can optimize the <laughs> i love that so easy even your ceo can do it well let's head over to construct where most of the ceos don't spend a lot of their time so this is our construct platform which is the digitalized method of managing the solar construction 
And quickly, what we do is we take the CAD drawings, we convert it to a cloud-based digital twin, which is like an exact mirror image of the project. Every cable, every panel, every post, every blade of grass, it's all in the digital model. And then as the project is built, we pull data from the EPC, from a drone, from other sources, and then that basically creates a digital as-built. It tells you exactly what was built, whether it was built on bed budget, on schedule, it manages the quality and the schedule, and it integrates with suppliers, like how many panels are on site, how many are on, on road on the trucks, how many are gonna be made next week. So we're, we're kind of, it's like a, it's like a, a, almost like an Amazon for the oversight of the supply chain and the construction. Um, so as I mentioned, we're sca we've scaled that up to seven gigawatts of projects, and we see that this is one of the additional ways we can drive efficiencies in the future. So speaking of driving efficiency in the future, one of the things that folks are most excited about is TerraFab. And 23 was your coming out year of actually being able to show TerraFab off. You had the first um, sort of mobile uh, factory, as it were, that you uh, that you demonstrated early in the year. and. Am I right that you were able to achieve the lowest cost LCOE of any plant ever in history? Which is saying a lot because you've worked on a lot of plants. Could you unpack a little sure. why folks are so excited about TerraFab as a construction automation opportunity? Sure. Yeah, let me uh, share a little case study. So if we can go over here, you know, this is a 800 megawatt project in Qatar, which was actually TerraBase's first project as a company. This was this predated TerraFab or our construction automation system. Um, but it gives you an example of why we need automation in the future. So um, the scale of the projects is obviously huge. They're at the close to a gigawatt today, and we see the development of clusters of 5, 10, 50 gigawatts in one location. And everybody has labor challenges. I was speaking with the CEO of an Indian EPC last week, and he told me, we have labor crisis in India and he's like, surely you wouldn't believe it since we have 1.4 billion people, but we can't staff these big solar projects. So, the, so the, the challenge is, how do I have an efficient workforce? How do I keep their jobs safe? How do I make them productive and maintain high quality standards? So, and that's where we think uh, robotic or industrialized deployment of solar is so critical. And you can see it in this project here where maybe a little difficult to see on the camera, but you can see how the yeah, the construction's kind of ad hoc. There's material kind of lying around. There's crews. It, it's, not, it's not as sort of regimented and methodical as you would think about sort of a factory approach to building solar. And so we want to take this world of manual construction and, and like this project had 3,000 people, right? So that's a lot of people to manage across 10 square kilometers. And how do we take that so that effectively it's like we're gonna 3D print the plant. Yeah. So I design it in software, the software runs the construction, and I just raster the plant and, and print the rows in 3D. High predictability, high quality, high safety. And so we're seeing huge interest and we're excited to start scaling this up this year. We'll layer in some of the phenomenal video that you guys have taken from the in-field operations that actually demonstrate what is now a mostly automated but will be completely autonomous system once you've got the rovers that are able to move the modules around. It's really fascinating. And as you pointed out earlier in our preview, the fourth and final piece to this overarching system is the SCADA, the plant controls and EMS. Let's talk a bit about that and as we wrap. Yeah, great. So we um, have a lot of advanced technology to operate the plant, you know, and it, it's kind of interesting because, you know, the de development phase is a couple of years, construction phase is one or two years. Then you've got a 50 year marriage, you know, and so and, and it's interesting that the decisions you make in the design and the construction, uh, it's like picking a good partner to marry. Um, you're set for the duration. Right. And so um, you want to go in with high quality and then you'll get high performance. Um, and so the control system is all about managing the plant very uh, effectively. So how do I make sure I get the maximum energy production? How do I charge the batteries most efficiently? How do I interact with the grid in a way that's most cost efficient and, um, and has high energy performance? And then, and then what we're doing, which is unique, is we're connecting the construct, so the digital twin of the plant, to the plant predict, which is the energy model for the plant to the SCADA, which is how the plant is actually performing. You know, it's like the magical triangle of 
um, you know, getting the, this is what was built, this is how we're performing. If there are performance deficiencies, here's why. And so we want to kind of close that loop so that today we get the most out of our plants. And then tomorrow when we design the next plant, we can be informed by what we learned from the plant's historical performance on the other projects. So we think that's how we'll drive cycles of innovation in the future. This is the time to scale our industry to the terawatt era. Companies like Terabase make it incredibly accessible and exciting to believe that we are now scaling beyond the hundreds of megawatts and the gigawatts that we have been used to. Matt Campbell and his team are making it possible. Matt, how would folks reach out to you if they were so inclined? Yeah, just come, come to our website and we can set up a time and meet up and share more about our offerings. And is that terabaseenergy.com? It's terabase.energy. Fantastic. Go to terabase.energy, check out the videos. We'll show some additional clips from the demos they have here in their booth at InterSolar if you're interested. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. 